Hey, what is up guys? Today's video we will play the Royal Tournament. A lot of you guys were asking for that and we're gonna play this Minor Warbreaker deck today because this will be the ultimate test. This is the ultimate mana test for Minor Warbreaker. Is it really that good as I said? Or oh, I'm just lying to you guys. Um, I subbed in the Fireball because I saw some people using this deck in CL and also in the Global Tournament. And I just saw so many people using Lava Hound and Mother Witch, so I just think Fireball over in a Global Tournament should be better, but it's just my personal preference. Currently, we're number four in the world. I just pushed really, really greatly with this deck, and let's try to get even higher today. If you guys don't want to miss any videos in the future uh, on this channel, I can't really talk right now. Like, I can't really talk today. I don't know what's going on, so subscribe, activate the bell, quote Morton for support. Go into the game. Let's do it. Here we go, guys. Here in the first game. And let's just give him a good luck. And let's see what he is going to play. So we just go for Warbreak at the bridge. He's just going to drop his ghost. So I would say we're just going to go for an eye. We're just going to fireball on top of the Mother Witch, hopefully. Here's a gift I'll give to you on this Mother's Day. Okay. Not what I want to see, so I need to go for a lock here. Ah, the fireball was really bad. So the good thing for us is that he still needs to defend the knight, but most likely he's going to end after that. I don't really know which spell does he have. So I would say we're just going to go for bats here. He's just going to drop his electric spirit right on top, so we just go for spear goblins. Okay, really important spear goblins. If we would have played them to the left... <clears throat> I think we would have lost already, so that was a kind of lucky secret, I would say. So we're just gonna go in for a wall breaker at the bridge. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What's he gonna do against it? He's just gonna murder, which so I'm just gonna fireball instant. Let's go. And we got a connection. Like, even just some damage. I would say RG is one of the harder matchups. I think even RG could be one of uh, like the hardest matchup um, because of the Electus Speed. Electus Speed being so annoying. Um, I personally even think match up like Lava is easier because of the Fireball and the really cheap Psyche. I think I beat Lava out like every time. Um, but I think more, I got like one loss against Royal Giant, two against Lock Bay decks, which are not as easy as you guys think. Even if you're like, okay, minor and cheap Psyche, they're just like rocket cycling you, and it was a really cheap Psyche version. So, hmm. I think we're just gonna go for this. Now we're just gonna bats here. Just gonna Lock. I think we're just gonna go on for this. Go for spear gums here. I think we need to take the damage, which is not good, but it's not gonna cost us the game. So we're just going for a lock here to kill the mother witch as soon as we can, please. Let's go, mother witch dies, and we also get a connection on top of the tower. So I think it was kind of worth it. So just go for a knight here, and we're just gonna go for bats. Okay. Just going for spear goblins here. And we're just gonna lock this back. Ah, that's so much damage, guys. This is bad. This is really bad. So I think we're just going for wall breaker. Just going for bats here. This is good. Just gonna lock this. Is this ghost in time? Is the question. Yes, but here we're still gonna be able to get one shot, which is huge. So I think we just go for a knight here. Okay, we're just going for this and just going here. Fireball. Good fireball thing. Bomb tower. Can you just go in here? He will elect to spirit now. He still needs to defend the other lane, so we're just gonna go with a log. Let's go, log on top! Fireball on top of the tower! GG's well played! Taking the dub! And that was absolutely incredible. I don't know how we won the matchup, but with this game, we're currently number two in the world in the global tournament. Let's go. 
go, guys. After search for half an hour for another game for number one world, I just wasn't able to find a game. So we're currently number two. And I'm just going over some replays because, yeah, I don't want a video to end there. And I still think it's really well to upload that. And yeah, I'm really, really, like, kind of sad that we didn't find a game because I would have loved to go for number one. But yeah, better nothing going for replays. And so... Fireball, honestly, I think against, like, in the global tournament against the decks, I'm facing Spell and Poison. I don't really face any type of graveyard decks. Um, I just face, like, Lava Loon. Or, like, this is the most deck I face, at least. Um, I face on Lockbait against Lockbait, to be honest, would Poison be better. But I just, like, so scared of Lava because I face actually a ton of Lava So I decided to put in the Fireball. But it really depends on which decks you're going to face, which spell you're going to go. So... I went really aggressive. The reason why I went so aggressive is that I knew that he didn't have his um, he didn't have his zap and cycle. So I'm just going for defensive miner, and you always want to go for defensive miner on top of his miner or a knight. And the best opposite lane pressure push against against um, Lava Loon is just knight at the bridge. No warbreaker, no miner, no uh, miner bats. It's just warbreaker at the bridge. Uh, just knight at the bridge. It's just knight at the bridge, not warbreaker at the bridge. Because if you play knight at the bridge, the opponent needs to respond to it with an affair drain, or you will take a ton of damage. If you go for warbreaker, they're just gonna ignore it and you don't get any damage. Okay, yeah, you get some damage, but I don't really think it's worth because knight is doing way more damage and keeping out the pressure. And. Minor spirits, you can do it in some city in uh, some situation, but especially if they have like bomber or stuff against the spear gums or minions. Um, with, when they have um, minor, um, when they have minions in the deck and go for minor bad, it's like really bad elixir trade. So most of the time, I'm just gonna go for knight at the bridge. So I'm just going for a knight here in front of my bats because I want my bats to survive. So I'm like, okay, please bats, just protect the lava. So I'm just going for the bomb to this is the optimal bomb tower placement if you face any lava loon decks. So I would always say. If you play um, Lava Loon, just go ahead with that. So I'm just going for bad time. I'm just going to go for a great minor pickup. So I'm just going to wait here because I want a perfect fireball on the dragons and all the pups. So I'm just going for a fireball. Also push it into the bomb. And I think I'm just going for a minor warbreaker push here. The reason I'm going for a minor warbreaker push here is because I just want to keep up the pressure. I know he, I, he can still get my tower. Um... But I think I'm just going for a knight here. That was kind of unlucky, honestly, if my spear gobs died. That wasn't like my goal. So I'm just going for a fireball here. I thought maybe he's going to play a bomb tower at the same time, uh, balloon at the same time. So I just go for warbreaker here because I knew he's going to use a zap. And I'm still going to defend this. I'm going to get a ton of damage on this tower. But I'm like, okay, I'm still trying to defend this. So after seeing the mine, I'm like, okay, should I really commit the fireball? I don't think so because the miner would just chip away. So I'm just going to take the tower. Or he's just going to take the tower. And so I'm just going to go in for a mine on top of the tower. And you guys will see it's going to be really, really close because of one spicy cut on the stack. So I'm just going to fireball. I'm just going for this. And now I'm just going in for that. So I'm just going to go in for... Like, I was, like, just really, like, really confused. I'm just going for bats last second, and then Fairdrake almost got my tower, and now it's really, really close. I'm just going to cycle my tower. It's just going to go for a bomb tower now. Bomb tower last second coming down here. He was just going for a fireball. Honestly, I was a really bad miner. I should have played on a safe spot there. But I just need to go for defensive fireball, and just need to wait until the... the yeah, until I get, get until he gets back for fire, but I'm just going for warbreakers in the pocket. And the funny thing with the warbreaker was that my knight, which I played panically, which like I just panicked playing on defense against the fair and connected or like helped to connect my warbreaker go to the tower because the tank for the king tower was just absolutely say GG's were played. That's how you beat lava and I'm honestly percent I'm really percent, I'm really percent sure. I'm really really sure slow Morton. If I would have played a bit better, I would have won like way easier. I also could have won like 1-0, honestly. It's not as bad as it looks like because it's a really cheap side and keep it the pressure. Only really hard variation is right now. Arrows plus Zap, but to be honest, most of the people are playing Firewall because they're still afraid of Mother Witch and all this stuff, and Warhawks especially. So GG's were played. Great win. So guys, see you next matchup, and this is also one of the harder matchups. So I'm always trying to show you the hardest matchup inside of Clash Run. It's gonna be the Warrior Giant deck. Why is it so hard? Because there's a ghost variation, which is way more annoying because most of the time you want to go for Bomb Tower plus Knight on top of the RG. But the ghost really messes up the cycle. So especially if you don't have the miner or like don't have a um, knight in cycle, you don't really have anything. You can't really spear gobs on top of that. And it also really, really puts you in a bad position. Especially if you go goes in for Voyager, you're gonna go for a um, knight on top of that with a bomb tower. You always need to commit like a defensive mine. This is never what you want to do. So um, honestly, also the Electus bit is really annoying because bats are like my main single target damage troop. And 
Yeah, in most matchups, I just want to keep up the pressure with minor plus bats or just going bats defense. So most of the time, I will go in for bats on top of the Royal Giant and just going to predict the floor. At least that's the play I'm most like uh, most of the time going to do. So I'm going for defensive minor here. I'm just going to drop bats uh, on top of that. He's going for a really late leg to split. Now you guys are going to see I'm going for a splitted wall break here because I was like, okay, I just want to get some damage on both sides. But this, um, his electric split actually got a chain on both troops. So not really what I want to see, but we're still looking really, really clean here. So I think now we're just going to cycle log. I'm going to take a ton of damage. I don't really know the situation anymore, but it's going to be like a really huge comeback win. And normally with minor control decks in Jenny, you don't really want to comeback games you just want to control games because it's a minor control deck um but honestly i'm just really really happy like how this deck is being back because i feel like especially like considering the clash only world finds us soon and i qualified like thanks for all the um, wishes for that it's like actually my third world finds in a row not a ton of people like did it i think like elsiop might be the only one who's able to qualify for the third world finals in a row so I'm just really interested to see how it's going to work out, but I'm I'm feeling really, really good in the matter. Um, and I know if I can, pre if I'm going to practice a bit more and just focus a bit more, that I'm able to beat even like the best players in the world, which are like Muhammad Light and, and Movie. I even beat Movie this weekend 2-0, and um, because I know like if I, I mean, I'm capable of beating everyone. <laughs> And even people are just like, ah, Morton is not that good right now in a good uh, in a good spot. Yeah, I know that. I know that, that I'm not practicing that much, but I'm. I know that um, even without playing too much competitively or practicing, that I'm still one of the best and a player which has a ton of experience. So I will still, I will be ready for Worlds. You guys, um, we see that and. Especially like being back in the meta, I didn't really enjoy the last meta too much. Golem, like more of the beatdown decks, and that was actually a really great fireball. Um, like I'm kind of sorry about talking some stuff, but I think it's just like sometimes it's interesting to talk about the stuff. Um, that I wasn't really a fan of this golem e giant type decks. Even drill cycle wasn't really my deck type. Even was a cycle deck, but like mining wall breaker looks like it's being back. My, I mean, I'm number two in the world in the global tournament, and if this deck is back, especially on top later, also I'm just feeling so confident because this is my best deck. I finished number two in the world with this deck. I finished number three in the world with this this deck. I finished number two in the world in the global tournament. Um, I just dominated CL with this deck. I'm just like this is just my most comfortable deck, and I just played the most games with this minor wall breaker deck. So I think I can still improve this deck. I think if I'm playing this deck on a perfect level. Level. and this needs a ton of time to do like you can beat any matchup i can beat any matchup if i'm playing on my best um i lost the matchups against um Lockbait once i could have played way better i lost against ag once like this like i think the same deck as this guy i could have beaten him even if it was like a tough matchup and i also lost to another Lockbait guy because he just outplayed me and i just think I don't really, I didn't really lose the game because I felt like I was, um, I had no chance, right? I'm always like, especially if you play a cheap psycho deck, you will always notice mistakes because you have so many, you're doing so many decisions. By the way, we're just pressuring so hard. He needs to go in for a royal giant, and this is the thing. Every time you really need to keep in mind when he doesn't have his electric spin cycle, when he doesn't have his lock in cycle, and when he doesn't have enough elixir to go in for the wall breaker because most of the time we're just gonna play the wall breaker to bait out something, and. This is the thing which people don't really recognize playing minor wall breaker decks. Most of the people are just going in for minor wall breaker, minor wall breaker. For, for sure, sometimes it's a great play to get like the one the damage if you have a Lix adventure you want to punish them. But in most of the situations, in my opinion, minor spear gums, minor bats is way more efficient because they're doing more damage and more wall breaks are more just like to bait or Lix to get the Lix adventure and then punish them with minor spear gums or minor bats or even night bats. Night wall breaker, you have so many capability, capabilities. This deck is insanely strong. And it's my favorite deck inside of Clash World forever. So the last game we are going to look over is a Graveyard matchup. A really heavy deck. He has Hunter, he has Snowball, he has Cage, he has Electricity, he has Mega Knight. And he has Fireball. So a really big, huge goal uh, Mega Knight Graveyard deck. So Graveyard is going to be a matchup which a ton of people will ask 100%. So I, I covered... Um, I am... Um, we covered a Royal Giant deck, we, called, we covered another Royal Giant deck, we covered Lava, now we're gonna cover this Royal, uh, this Graveyard Mega Knight deck. I also faced a Golem deck, but honestly, I'm gonna be honest with you, the match I was back then when Nightwitch was completely broken and impossible, you could just give up because you couldn't kill the Nightwitch bats, like you just need to spend 8 elixir with the Spear Gums, Fiber and Lock, but right now it's kinda easy, you're just gonna play, you're just gonna keep up the pressure, he have a way cheaper cycle than him, there was also like the, the big advantage before, and then when I play the Nightwitch, you're just gonna wait until he's gonna play something else, you're just gonna Fiber and Lock, Nightwitch is dead, and we're just gonna use the bats on top of the baby ring after connects on something, so this is how you play the deck. So we're just going in for... 
um, really aggressive here. By the way, you can play a perfect log. If your opponent's going for Hunter, you can kill the Hunter like completely with a uh, perfectly log timing. So I'm just going for a Snowball here. So I'm just going for a Knight here. I'm just also going to bet. I'm going to try to be really aggressive here because I know he spent a ton of Elixir. Like, not really spent a ton of Elixir because he's up, but he has to use a ton of Elixir on defense. So I'm just going for Warbreak aggressive here. And there's some things which you want to really want to do, which is a great tr uh, trick with the stack is you go for minor bets and your opponent is going to use a Snowball. And they, they, you're kind of predicting a Snowball. So in case the, the, the Warbreak, like, or like the, the bets are like one millisecond before the tower, you're just going to spam the Warbreaker in because then they're not going to be able to kill both so yeah perfect lock here as you guys saw it's just an uh, actually um really really great timing so just going in for spear goblins here okay we're just gonna go for bats i think it's like you want you don't really want to go same lane normally but i was like still didn't know it's like i knew it's most like gonna be great with x i'm just gonna keep up the pressure on opposite lane for sure he's not going in for a snowball so we need to get a perfect defense down so i'm just going for cycling a uh, minor top of the tower i'm gonna take a two shots normally the best positioning against the fisher deck is going to be the inside spot because when a fisherman is gonna be played in the middle the fisherman will walk and not pull that so we're just gonna go for a lock here and as you guys saw we got two defensive bats and one push the only annoying thing is that this magna jumped on the tower didn't expect it but look at the right side just like some death damage or like just like some damage of the wall breaker just playing them at the bridge for two leagues to just keep out the pressure and this is what i like to do even here we got a ton of damage on the left side against graveyard decks you should be never even if you have a big advantage on the left side, you should always try to keep out the pressure on the opposite lane. Because against Graveyard decks, especially with a Mega Knight, um, you, don't need, you never want to go same lane. So I'm just going in here aggressive. As you guys saw, going in for a Fireball and a Goblin Cage. This is another surprising play to bypass the Goblin Cage with the Warbreaker. And now it's just about like spell cycling. Minor Fireball on top of the tower. GG's well played, taking another up. And this brings us, as you guys see... Um, right now to this positioning in the global turn we're currently number two in the world at fair 35 to 3 so we're actually even better than the number one um player with the losers but the first tiebreaker is going to be crowns and there we're like 10 behind because we're playing a control deck and this is actually kk who's playing a royal hawks deck or uh, and this royal giant deck which is really really solid i think he's mixing around so if you guys don't want to miss any videos in the future don't forget to subscribe also using creator good mod is highly appreciated i would say i'm out thanks for watching and goodbye guys